Alright, just because I'm making this video doesn't mean I'm going to be consistently making them. I don't play Minecraft anymore, but I've been forced to make this video in order to earn a, earn a pair of glittery socks from the contractor. What I didn't realise is that the total production of this video would take about two hours, and that if I just got on a minimum wage job for two hours, I could have bought myself four pairs of glitter socks, given that they apparently cost about two pounds each. Yeah, here I am, so I might as well show you what we're going to be building. It's this 8x8 door, the smallest one, at 2,093 rocks. Uh, I'm going to skip this cooldown because this door kind of sucks because it's a bit slow. But who cares? Here's an opening. My little channel phone. Still going. Well, oh, still a whole lot. I think it takes like 73 seconds, this whole thing. It's kind of stupid, but it's small. Alright, there we go. That's the door open and that's basically it. Well, this tutorial won't be particularly easy to follow because I haven't made it thusly, I've just made it so I can do it quickly because I want my socks and I want to do more interesting things. So let's get straight into it. Okay, we're going to start by just building the, uh, the piston layout and stuff. Um, side pistons of course, on this side you want one on the top. Triple on the bomb. This is a cord, but well, it's a little bit more complicated, I guess. It's like a folding thing. So you want a row of pistons facing this way, and then up, and also across. Lastly, fill these up with the storage. And then for the inputs, I'm going to do them in white just because, you know, why not? Feeds is along there. These, this row must be obsidian. And it must be this is the same. And this row must also be obsidian. And then on this side we want blocks along like that. And then blocks along like this. And more. And finally blocks along like this. And more redstone dust. And then along the top we want to go Six blocks up, so make a six duple extender, and then let's go across to all six. Now we want our storage. We have one row here. Come over here. Put your redstone block double extender, which is actually go there. other two storages here and here which is different to any other door any other 8x8 this is what allowed this top layout is what allowed me to make the door a lot smaller although it's a lot more complicated than previous layouts which is why the redstone's more complicated 
hate to do this. But one obsidian, one across there, so these pistons can't push across. Then test here, test for those, that's a bud. Now along there. And then on the other side, on one along here, one there, let's just have a bunch of pistons there, row along here with three tip repeaters on, and then a row a bit like this. And those are, that's your piston layout complete. Okay, now we're going to do the input circuit. This powers the side pistons and also powers the um, uh, all the individual circuits at the beginning. Then we flip the lever, which goes there. The beta on four. Beta on four. Torch, torch, torch. Yes, yeah, torches. Get a piston here. Cauldron. We're going to be building a bud here which will power all of the stuff on this side. Just a way of getting the signal across. Oh, they added this out for that, that's neat. Uh, compared to here, going into a dust and a torch. And another dust like that, so that acts as a bud. And to get signal out of that, we get a sticky piston facing down with a redstone block in its face. And then we want a hopper. This will create all of the delay that we need on the opening for we want the bottom to power. Put a three tick there. And then for the items, what in the right hand hopper, three uh, three shovels or three non stackable items, and then two complete stacks of normal items. And on the right on the left hand hopper, we want three shovels and then fifty-six. Um, normal items, the same items, so they can stack into each other. And then get a uh, output out of there, going into a quartz block, because it's part of the floor. That must be solid, of course. Piston, and another piston there, and another piston here, going down into dust to update it. So this here acts as your. Um, dual edge for the bottom. And I don't know what state that should be in. And go by default. This should be extended. Put this comparator on subtract mode. And then we want to go down like this. This should be a slab here. Oh we've got one in my inventory. And place a block of redstone there. That's to cut it off, just, just die. I don't know how this works exactly, but it, it works. And then to power the other side pistons is another part of the job of the input circuit, which we do like so with a two droppers facing like that, another dropper like that, hopper facing down, and also hoppers facing like this. Uh, in this dropper here, I think, place a red wall, and then in this hopper, put five items like that of a different kind to the one that's in the dropper. Get an output of the dropper like this. Comparator going into a block, now going into a uh, dropper like this, and a hopper. Obviously, put an item in that. And that goes across like so into the torch. We also want to have a piston there and another sticky piston there, which will go along into a regular piston with five blocks on it and a redstone block. Also, just going to place a piston up here. This isn't the final piston, but I'm going to replace it now just for the sake of making stuff work. And then we want a dropper and a hopper. Redstone, redstone dust on there, item in the hopper. Now get a 
So, and then torches along, and then a two stick coming out of there, Oops. facing that way. Torches. And then two more torches. That'll power your side pistons, and that is the input circuit complete. And now we're going to try and make the closing circuit, but I'm probably going to forget how to in the meantime. Uh, okay, so we're going to start, not necessarily at the start of the circuit, but rather with the part that's going to be difficult to build if we don't build it right now. Uh, so get droppers like that and a hopper facing upwards like so. Then get another hopper like that. Dust there and a vortic. Basically the reason why we're starting with this part is because we need to place a minecart in between these two blocks and that's a little bit difficult. So we're actually going to need to remove some of this stuff, probably should have done it first but you know I didn't so tough. Uh, we want to get a fence post, place it there. And then just get some rails and a minecart. No, not minecart, a chest minecart. And then break all of them and then you can replace everything that you just broke like oops, that and don't forget to replace your regular piston this will go along like this so make this here a slab Uh, to get the first input out of our dual edge, what we're going to do is go along like this, so it will retract for a moment and power this line of redstone that will push the first bit of storage across, and then get a repeater there, going across into two more repeaters here and there, going up like that. We also then want a sticky piston facing downwards with a redstone block there. We want a comparator coming out of that hopper. Two blockers facing upwards and then two hoppers like that. Then you want to get a sticky piston facing down here. Another redstone block going into a that and like this okay uh, I think it should be a one tick I think uh, hang on wait no that should be a two tick shouldn't it I'm not overly confident with the circuit so I'm gonna need to go and cross check stuff quite frequently sorry about that This here should be that is this here should be a one tick by the way. There should be a um, drop facing up and one across. A hopper going into there. Two more hoppers like so. This there should be a dropper facing down. Drop facing up and two like this. Item in this one here, the one which is locked by the redstone block. Put a one tick repeater there. And one of the and a dust there. And then a three tick there. And a one tick there. Going along here you want to have a dropper hopper and another comparator going out going to a three tick and another three tick and then here we all have uh, a 
monostable like this. And then this is actually part of the blue circuit that is needed for or about to build now. This should be a beta slab there. I think it goes like that. Three tick there. I think I'm entirely wrong. No, I'm not. That's that's always nice. Three tick there with a block and a sand. And then get yourself a slab there. This block I placed earlier needs to be a furnace. This furnace needs to have 28 items in it. Don't forget to replace your dust. And a mount right there. And then here, place that and a two tick. And I think that's everything. No, it's not. I've done that part, part slightly wrong. This part here needs to be a slab. Now that should be everything. Cool. Okay, I missed one thing. Just uh, behind this piston here in this minecart chest, make sure there's an item. And then just to see what happens. Uh, you probably shouldn't test it now because it'll be an effort to reset, but just activate it on the closing. It'll do that. And then obviously all of this will be pushed down by the top. So I'm just going to do that manually because obviously I haven't built the top yet. And then when we activate this again, it'll do the same thing. I'll do another part there which will push these pistons up ready for the tape to go. Well, nearly. Speaking of the tape, well, not quite the tape, but nah, actually let's do the tape, why not? We want to have a regular piston right, not there, right there, and another one right there. This is one of those fully automatic tapes that stops itself rather than needing an external timer. And the way we do that is, uh, let's get our magenta wool out. We have a dust there. Bring it to a two tick. And then I think there's another two tick. Let me just check. Yep, two and two. The dust there. And then to power. So whenever a block goes here, it'll get powered. This will power the dust and then go across to reuse a redstone block. We'll do that. But obviously it doesn't do that with a normal block because we haven't powered the normal block. And the way we do that is by placing a beta here. Power it. And then placing a power to here which will lock that beta on. So now it works like that. The other side is uh, a bit more simple. Well, kind of. Have two pistons like this. Uh, a redstone like that. A three tick like so. Turn into another dust that will power, power this piston like that. And then once again to power it, we're going to get a comparator and a furnace and just put one item in there. So. So this will push it across, however with a redstone block, this is pretty clever, it will push across but it won't push along because it will redirect, the redstone block will redirect this redstone so that uh, it does not power the piston. So that should be the whole piston tape done. It's very small circuits, one circuit in the door. Not the fastest piston tape in the world but it's a slow door anyway so it doesn't really make a difference. And you'll see when it gets over here, it all stop like that. And that is your tape finish. Okay, I've been told to put some enthusiasm in it, as uh, into it, as I as I'll show here. Um, but uh, quite frankly, that's going to be a, a little bit difficult because we're building my least favorite, well, not my least favorite circuit of the door. But I've no idea how to build it, so I'm going to be constantly cross-referencing with that model over there. And 
uh, yeah, we'll be learning together. That's because I did not build this circuit. This circuit was built by Chris, mostly. Play one cortex going all along here. And then torch. Another torch like that. That's to push uh, push the blocks up, across, and then up uh, for the uh, to get the blocks in position for the tape. And then to power the tape, we will have this here. Watch it. What's going to happen is on the opening, this uh, row of this column of blocks will be pushed down, flooding the. Uh, and this drop, this resin block would flood the dropper, but it won't have been updated. This repeater will update it, and then will power that comparator, which powers. Uh, that is not how it works. Which will then power this uh, block underneath the, the piston, starting the piston tape. Don't forget to put an item in that. Okay, so then after the tape, we want to start retracting everything. So to, to do that, we have a two tick there, going into this. Just for a little bit later, we need to make sure we have a dropper here and a hopper. Item in that. Here, you want to have a comparator. Don't forget to place your repeater back. Comparator with furnace, but before we place the furnace, we're going to place something else, which is um, what what goes here. Uh, I can't remember. Let's go find out. Okay, sitting on a two slabs. Okay, so we want to have those two slabs. Here and here. And then we can place our furnace facing this way ideally. Which will have a shovel and then five items in it. That is so that it is just long enough to power all of these, but not to go down and power the uh, power the repeater. Otherwise, it wouldn't work, obviously. Otherwise, I wouldn't put it like that. Okay, what happens now? Right. Then we have this with an item in it. That's uh, this torch locking that. Why this needs to be full up, or else the item will end up going down. But that doesn't matter. We we'll have a thing there, I think. I can't even remember. Oh, it is. Yes. Look how good I am. With a torch. Like so. This will extend part of the first part of that double extender, and the second part will come from this will want it. The second part will come from here. Going up. Up again. That's where I remember that this should be a slab. Up again. Again. And then here we have some heaters. I can't remember on what timings. Let's go find out. <laughs> two, two, one, three. Two, two. One, three, two, 
No, we will not waste hot books, please. Yes. Item in there, obviously. And then get an output. Torch there. That there. I believe this is a one tick here. And a one tick there, but I will check. We want to have a block there, and then when we place the block there, this redstone dust will be pointing into the block, and we'll have a four tick which will repower this torch line. Also, right, let's see that's just there. But we have a three tick here, going into a slab, going into a block, which will have a Torch. This will burn out twice, giving us two quick pulses in succession. Crap. Don't do that. Uh, what's that being powered by? No clue. Uh, It should be dust there and then a torch. I think that's what it should be. And I think that's the whole circuit. I'll fix everything up and then we'll see. Okay, there were three things that I got wrong on the bottom. One is that we need a block here with a redstone dust on it. So this model stable actually works. The other, or one of them, is that we need a block or a slab in there with a beater in it facing that way and the other is that this block which I just removed oh crap needs to be a slab as well and now when we test it we'll see what does that when we just push that down it won't work push all the blocks down like the top would and then we should see now it'll be the way, the take will fire. And then the quad will be the fraction. So if we hadn't changed those things, it, uh, parts, uh, some parts wouldn't work and there would be a clock at the end, so it would just be really obnoxious. But there we go, that is the bottom of our door done. And now let's move on to the top. And now we're going to start on the top um, closing circuit, which is the orange again. So we're going to go up from our input circuit here, have a two tick repeater up once again with a three tick. This will act as a monostable, which will go across uh, like that, I think. Or is it just one? Oh no, it goes like this and then there is a slab here and then along with two pieces like that going up oops with dust along there that will push down the first row of uh, blocks which come from here we push those across first with a uh, pretty standard monostable here, a three tick, a glass block, and a sand block. Uh, yeah, three tick and a two tick. This is a uh, power this line, which is budding this. So, because it's only a bud, we need to update it, which we do with a regular piston facing that way, and then a regular piston facing that way. So, currently, well, I'm just going to disable the bottom so it doesn't power when we, whenever I flip the lever. Currently, he will do that, which is obviously not very much. Um, next, what we're going to have is this little part here going across. 
going into an obsidian block, we'll see why it needs to be obsidian in a little bit. And there, we're going to block this off, but with a buffer, just because it needs to be a buffer for later. Um, and we are now going to go down here, place a repeater, going into a block, going into another block, have a dust there, a comparator here, a piston there, pulled in here, it's another pretty standard uh, monostable. This will go into a uh, quartz block, a torch. So this monostable here sends a one tick through this comparator, which sends a one tick through the torch. This repeat, however, is will not send a one tick through the torch because repeaters can't send one tick through torches. I'm just going to here, giving this line here another one tick, and then up. This will be blocked off by another proper, facing into the first proper. And a three tick right there. Next, we want to have a piston here with a block on top and then a sand on top of that. What is it? Two sand on top of that, which will get powered by this comparator and this furnace. That will power this, which is another thing, with three sand on top of it, I think it is. And then this here will get powered up here with a torch and a slab like that. And that there is the closing circuit, but it will not work without the addition of two more circuits. First of all is the redstone, the redstone lock double extender which works like so. We have a one tick repeater there, two tick repeater there, three tick repeater there, four tick repeater there, I think it is. Oh, and a, uh, and a one tick repeater there. So you have a block here, no two pistons like that, and a block. And then we also just want to get our update pistons in here. We have one there, facing downwards, one there facing across with a block there to bud the, the second piston and we also want one right here facing across the regular piston. So this is a very very clever circuit in that when, when you power it here you get the full extender and when you power it here with a two tick it'll do this, this is very useful with a one tick, it just locks across and one tick the other ones along. And if you give it a three tick, it will do basically the same thing. So, this circuit I'm actually unreasonably proud of. It's probably the smallest circuit in the door. I know I said about the tape earlier, but I mean, I think it's this one. Uh, and yeah, it does quite a lot. So, now we'll get some more stuff happening when we power this. When this powers across, that's powering. This, uh, this circuit which will push the locks across and same with this three tick here we'll push the locks across and once I want to block this off there should be most of the top circuit working like that now we just need to push the box down which is the uh, job of the last important circuit of the, uh, of the top closing which is another one that gets reused a lot because it might look like we're taking up a lot of space on this closing, but even the closing circuit itself will get reused in the opening. And this double extender we're about to build will get reused uh, quite a bit. So we want a slab here, going into a three tick, going into a dropper, and a hopper. This will have. I don't know why I'm doing it like this. We'll have a eight shovels in it, like that. Here we want to have a regular piston and a sand block. Right here. And then we want to have a block there, taking an output, going into another comparator. I just need to go and grab 
that is. Because we want that, but that's track mode. This here, which we want, we want this many items in, you'll need to smelt 37. It's just best for it, best of its furnace, like that. So as soon as this gets powered, one item will leave the leave the dropper, meaning they'll we'll get an output through there. And this here will go into a block. Oops. This will bother me if it's not cyan, so I'm going to make the cyan. Into a two tick, like that. Replace this block we just removed with a slab. And then we want to go across with a one tick. Cross again with a one tick. And make a locker stable out of this, which will be a two tick. This is uh, this button I'm about to place is completely unnecessary. You don't need to, but I think it looks nicer, so I keep it. Uh, here we want to have a torch, a dropper, and a hopper. Three tick. This would be the falling edge. Put these two hoppers here because we we need to place a comparator on top of this hopper. And this is going to go into a sticky piston here with a slime block and then a redstone block. So this here is our double piston block. And just place this block here because otherwise I will forget later. So now when we place this here, it extends and the reason why it tracks a little bit weirdly is that we haven't placed our later pistons in, which is as simple as that. So now that works slightly better. Like so. So that should be our entire top closing completely finished. Almost all of that will get reused in the opening, as we'll see later. First, let's just demonstrate this top closing. There you go. And then on what you'll do when we on the lever, so we will delay and it will retract the first set like that. All right. Now let's move on to the sex duplex extender. Okay. Now we're going to go on to my favourite circuit for the door, the sex duplex extension. It's been longest uh, of any of the circuits building this one. And it all starts up here with this hopper dropper, which goes across into a three tick. We are going to uh, have this power off the falling edge, or else this um, this dust will cause to power it during the opening, and we don't want that. So we're just going to power it like this. Put an item in it. Move this because we can actually we're actually just going to power that. There. We can, you can keep there a beta, but it won't do anything. Um, then go across, place an obsidian right there on two ticks. We're going to repeat on two ticks. Block down like that. Actually, I was wrong. This can be a normal block. This is the one that should be obsidian. Place pistons like that. And then the reason why that needs to be. And obsidian is because this is where our other sign block for the door goes. And then on this side, we want to place a furnace with an item in it. There's a two tick coming out. Don't forget to place this piston here. This is the updated piston from that line of redstone to this line of pistons. It's quite important. Block there. Two tick. Tick. That should be, able, should be on this file, I think, if I recall correctly. Yeah. And then go down into a one tick, and then back up to a slab like that. This little circuit here, uh, well, hang on, let's finish it first. 
this map, yeah. And of course, a little torch there. This circuit here, including this repeater over here, is basically just the way we join all of the inputs together. Um, yet, this is one of the key circuits in the door um, because the, the timing of it is basically perfect. And uh, we fire the circuit. I can't remember exactly how many times I counted once. It's like 20 times throughout the opening circuits of the door. And so it's very important. And uh, yes, so I will be referring to this as the core circuit for the rest of this when I'm explaining stuff. Not that I explain stuff very well, but I mean, whatever. So first, so now this will do that, which is not very much, but that's not important. Next, what we want to do is push across our redstone block double extender to power these pistons. And the way we do that is we have a hopper and a dropper here. We don't actually need the hopper dropper just yet, that's for later, but we need to place a block on it. That, that block there will bud this piston, which will have a redstone block and another block on it. And that will get pushed down and up. And to power this, the rest of the block in there, we have a four tick there. Now, this is only budded. This piston here is only budded by this dust. So to update it, what we're actually going to do is place a block here. And then a comparator right here. This comparator is what updates the piston. So now what it will do is this. So now what we want to do is we want to actually power this circuit. And then what will happen is this is the resonant lock will track to just the right moment, which will make, which will actually make this one tick. And so the way that we power this uh, the double extender is by powering the sand. And the way we do that is with the piston here with a cauldron on it. We want to fill that with water. And then take the two out of it so it only gives a one signal stroke. We'll see why that's important a bit later. Uh, place a drop facing that way, and then two droppers like so, and then join them up with some hoppers. I'm not exactly sure how many items we need to put in here, but I normally put about six or seven. We just need more than one, especially for during testing phase. Then we want to get an output out of this, which we do like so, and that will power our piston, which powers our double extender. So now what it does is this. Now we need to retract it. Basically just by updating that. And the way that we do that is by taking an output from here. And then placing something like that. This repeater will update the piston. But we don't need this, we don't want it to power every single time this goes, or else uh, it'll end up updating too early. So what we want to do is block off some of these pulses, which we do with another hopper dropper like this. Power it. So when the uh, resin dog extender extends, the item will go into the hopper so it doesn't get extended, so this doesn't get retracted earlier than it needs to be. So now when we power it, we will see this happen. And I'll give it one take. The really clever thing about this circuit is that if we do exactly the same thing for the retraction, but with this block, rather than being up here, being down here, we will actually update the pistons at this point, and then it will give us our first refraction, which is pretty clever. Next we want to do is we want a power core circuit, uh, and we do that from here, with a falling edge, four tick, and then a three tick, 
This is why we only want one water in here, because otherwise this comparator would go along and power some of these, and that would break stuff. But with only one signal strength, it will only power this one, and not power this one. And I, I, don't, I know I don't need to show you what happens every single time, and you certainly shouldn't be testing it this many times, but I grabbed the circuit, so deal with it, I guess. Okay. Now, next part of the next part of the door is a little bit bigger. So we want to have dropper spacing like so. Like that. Two hoppers going along, one going down like that. Item in this top one, I think. In there, I think that's on two ticks. Uh, I'm gonna go check actually, I don't trust myself. Yeah, two ticks, and yes, the item is in that dropper. That's gonna go down into a block. This will get powered at just the right moment by this dust here. So we'll get a two tick across. And this will go into a slab here. So, this will push the redstone blocks across at this point, powering these pistons. That's important for the refraction. And so they update space two rails like that. They can be activated rails, slightly cheaper, but powered rails look nicer. Um, and then the next part of the door we get from here. So place a three tick, and then another dust here. Then get yourself a sticky piston. A cauldron, fill that with water, and then go along like this. This will give us a monostable. However, what we do see is that because this comparator will also power that dust there, that will get a clock, and that's not what we want. So, to make it only power once, we get a two tick piece right here, and then another sticky piston that will push it up so it doesn't get powered again. Now to actually make stuff power, we want a torch going up here, another torch there, going into there that will power our core circuit. After that we want to power our redstone milk double extender again, which we do right here. Four tick. However, on the uh, on the retraction, we don't want, or at least at this point, we don't want this lock stable to power again. And so to stop that happening, which because that would happen because uh, this cauldron would retract and power it when this line here gets powered. To stop that, we have a torch there going into this hopper. Put an item in that hopper, once we placed earlier, and then a comparator out. So that means when this line powers, that'll get this will get unpowered for a little second. Power this, keeping this repeater over here locked, so it won't power the core circuit. Oh, the cauldron here won't power the core circuit again. So now what we see is that's pretty much the whole extension circuit complete. And the extension part here. We don't have the update here, but yeah, and this will leave the, uh, the block down so that we can do this again. This is just using the extension circuit for the start of attraction, and it actually, you'll see it actually does quite a lot of the attraction. And this is here, this part here we'll sort out a little bit later, but that there is the sextuple extension complete. Okay, now we're going to go on and build the sextuple retraction. I didn't build most of this circuit, most of this was Chris, but I did build this first part, which I'm quite happy with, and I'll show you what it does. Um, this here, we'll get, we'll get one tick in the uh, extension, so this acts as a little toggle. Um, and we want this 
to be powered, so we get a hover here, just because it needs to be sitting on a hover. And then place a furnace with an item in it. In the heart of here, there will be a portic, another portic, like that, going into a torch, going into a redstone, and another redstone, and another Peter going into there, as well as a block here, two hoppers, and a comparator. This here actually does a surprising amount. This bottom part here with the hopper clock, all this is going to do is, um, once you put an item in it, it's going to clock these here. This is going to update the piston at this point, uh, because I couldn't find a way of timing it because there wasn't enough space, so I just made a block instead. And um, this, but what this top part here does is it has exactly the right amount of de delay. So th when this torch here turns off, I think off, it will update this. Uh, uh, pushing the blocks up, which will attract the uh, the rest of my double extender early. Uh, so what we will do here is it will go here, power them, retract, and then this here will uh, this here will unpower, causing this to update, causing the retraction, the the resin block double extender to retract. This will retract, but then because of because of the way that it works, so that Whenever you power the redstone block double extender, you also power the yellow double extender. That's that yellow double extender is still going to power. And so what's going to happen is that this here is going to so extend and retract these blocks down. Now that probably didn't make very much sense in my explanation, so I will just show you it working. Hopefully it will work at least. So first we've got to do the extension. Make sure that blocks up. that will update now and then we can fire the uh, extension again for the first part of the retraction it will do that so you see we're, at, we're missing the retraction of these blocks here so for that we want to extend these, which we will do, I think that's now, but, um, but there's quite a lot of, we end up needing all of the space for very little stuff to actually happen, just because it's a, it's not very useful space, because it's all very, very, very far away from the inputs, but either way, that's what we need to do. Place hoppers like this, and I can't remember the items that go in them. Okay, so in the right hand, in the left hand side one, we want. Uh, let me get. In the left hand side one, we want eight snowballs, and then four shovels, and then in, in this one, we want two shovels. This just gives the perfect amount of delay. And also, from this torch, what we're going to do is bud. I think it's, uh, this this piston and that's going to push all of these blocks down. Here we want to have our uh, thing like that. With a sand block. And then an output here which will be through a furnace. This actually needs to be turned off. So what we're going to do here, I think this needs to be a slab. Something here needs to be a slab. This here needs to be on a slab, I won't tell you that much. Some dust there. Dust there. Let's go see which one needs to be a slab. Okay, it's this one. This here must be a slab. Put that on it. 
and then we want to get one more of our weird furnaces with those items in it. I can't remember if that comparison needs to be on subtract mode, it does not. As I said, I didn't build this, so I'm not overly familiar with how it works. We want to have a dust there as part of our output. And then we want to go along here with a two tick up. I'm going to spam that a little bit, but it's fine. I want to have stuff going along like this, and then along again, and then up. Big, big um, torch chain. And this here is going to then go along. Like that. And across into the torch. To make the uh, extension circuit extend for the second time, that's the beginning part of the attraction. What we're going to do here is place a block here get our dropper going into the hopper we placed earlier, make sure we put an item in it, and then place that there. So that will go in, and this whole line here is the input, so that's for how, we, how that works. And then we also want to have a four tick there, going across, like, I think it's like that. Is it like that? Yeah, it's like that. Into another four tick. on that furnace and then let's make these go up, 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 along here. We want to have a one tick. I think in some locations there needs to be a two tick, but I think it's mostly a one tick. I can't remember. One tick there. Along here. These do all of the complicated attractions right at the end, which I didn't, once again, not quite sure how they work. This will power part of core circuit. Yeah, to get these pistons at this point, at this level here, to uh, retract, what we're going to do is we're going to get a torch and dust there into a torch. Block there with a two tick. So we're going to a toggle like that. So we'll put the hopper there in a bit. Item in there. And then this part is going to be really awkward to build. I know, I'm sorry. Just place four tick there. And then out there, dust. You'll need to find a way out of here. I'm not quite sure how you can do that. Place a comparator right there, and then your hopper right there. And I think that's pretty much the whole of the six tuple. I hope. Let's find out. Find out what I've forgotten. It extends all the way. And then the second thing will go to power again. There we go, that's the whole 62 point finished. Or we've got one more circuit left, which is the extra move circuit, or the green circuit. And what this does is it will retract the blocks from the 624, up, put them in storage, and fire the next 624. This is another circuit which I'm quite happy about. And it all starts at this torch. So we put a piston going across. We want to get another piston, a regular piston this time. I'll get powered by that block over the torch. Get a redstone block and an old block there. Get a sticky piston here. So this will 
like that. That's quite fun to do, by the way. And we want to get another piston here with a cauldron. This is where we actually get our alpha out. Fill that with water. And then here, we want to get a copper facing across. That should, should, be, should be that one. Copper facing up, copper facing across. And then uh, hoppers like so. And of course, a slab right there. And then item like that. Oh, God. I don't know why I just paused. Okay, not much apparently. Oh, okay, that was all. Never mind. Then place one item in this dropper and one item in this hopper. And then here we get our alpha out of not this direction, but I'm just going to do a demonstration. So we get an alpha that time, get an alpha that time, third time we don't get an alpha. This is used to control how many six duples fire. So we get our alpha there, going down into a dust. So we'll go up here, item in there, oops. Power that's hopper that no that that there. This is gonna pulse this will be this line which will pull the blocks up from the ceiling. And then to put them into storage, what we do is we have a neat circuit here, reusing part of our clothing circuit, as I said we would earlier. Oops. With a faucet right there. Make sure that one's an obsidian by the way. So that will power this one through the sand and also then this the uh, redstone block one with a two tick through this lock stable. And then to power the next extruder extender, we put a torch right there. The only thing we're missing now is to power the first six tube extension after we've um, flicked the lever and we've done the first, uh, what's it called? And we've done the opening. And that's a simple case of this, block that off there, and then put an item in here, one item. So that will power from on the closing, this, the item will get pushed from this dropper to the other dropper. And then on the retraction of the opening, this redstone block here will power the dropper, and we'll get an output through that comparator, which will do exactly the same as this comparator. And there we go, it should be the whole door done. And the final test of the door, once you've placed uh, this dust here, because uh, I might have forgotten that. Closing works fine, as we should expect, because we've already tested that. I'm going to move these items over manually. You cannot open the door until these items have finished transferring. And then they open. And there you go, it works. Now you can fill up your door frame. Just be careful when you're filling up the door frame because when you place a block here and here, it will update the piston. Just place a block there while you're doing it and make sure it stays in the same state. And there you go, you'll have completed it. 
if you did it correctly. Congratulations on building this door. I mean, hopefully I'll get my socks now, so see you later. Uh, which